Hi, my name is Ashley Davlos. I'm going into my second year, and I'm a chemistry major. And I am usually quite punctual and not now really for my talk, so I'd like to apologize for that in advance. Um, I was in the Craig Hawker group, and my mentor was Dr. Luke Connell. And the name of my project was Engineered Enzyme and Mix for Detergents. So, in detergents nowadays, they all contain multiple things that um, support soil remover, uh, soften the water, fragrance your clothes, such as perfumes and things like that, um, optical brighteners to make the colors appear brighter, and the list goes on. But the main ingredient in detergents that will actually degrade a stain from your clothing is the enzyme. So in parentheses next to the enzyme, it says stain remover, and that is what is mainly used in detergents to degrade a stain from your clothes. So what we are wondering is, you know, enzymes are these really complicated molecules, they have many folds, they're really environment sensitive, and we're wondering, do we need this actual biological structure of the enzyme to clean our clothes, or can we make a simple enzyme mimic? So the benefits to this would be, obviously, you'd increase stability because it wouldn't be as sensitive as the actual enzyme. And you would decrease operating temperature since you know enzymes are very sensitive to their temperature and have an optimal environment that they like to function in. And you decrease cost on a mass production scale rather than for the consumer, but decreasing cost is always important for companies and such. So what do enzymes do? Enzymes break bonds. So an example is carbohydrates, which break down carbohydrates into more simple molecules for your digestive system. So that's the idea here. Um, you get hamburger grease on your clothes, and it breaks it down into smaller parts that can be washed away. Um, and the different types of enzymes that are used in detergents are um, proteases, which break down protein-based stains, so amide bonds. And there are lipases, which essentially break fat bonds, so grease stains, cellulase for oat stains, amylase for starch stains. And we're mainly focused on uh, lipase, so breaking fat bonds. Um, so again, enzymes are these complicated structures, uh, you know, our uh, iconic representation of them is this still really crazy, weird looking thing with a bunch of scribbles. Um, but, so in order to simplify this, we're trying to target just the very small green part in this large molecule. Um, so the active site, which in the case of lipase and protease is called the catalytic triad. And this triad consists of a hydroxyl group, a carboxylate, and an imidacyl ring. And so the way that this works is the aspartate activates the histidine, and the histidine then deprotonates the serine, and then that will cleave. This is a amide bond, so a protein bond, basically. And then so this deprotonated serine will break this amide bond right there. Um, but the catalytic triad is the same for both lipase and protease. So this already knowing nothing about our enzyme mimic, already looks a lot more simpler than this blue crazy structure. So this is our actual surfactant-based enzyme mimic. Um, and then we react these two, the epoxide ring is opened, and then you have your three different functional groups here, which create the catalytic triad. Um, so, now that we have our actual enzyme mimic, we need to verify that it works and see how it works and try to quantify how well it works, basically. So this is our substrate, so our fat bond, basically, or the grease that you spilled on your shirt. Um, and so this left vial just has our substrate, um, which in our case is palmitate. Um, and then we add our enzyme mimic, and that cleaves this fat bond right there by the oxygen. And then you get this nitrophenyl group that is UV active and causes the solution to turn yellow. So this vial, again, just has a substrate. You add the enzyme mimic, and then you hopefully get this yellow color. And if you get this yellow color, you know it's working because the nitrophenyl is what causes the solution to turn yellow. So we check this reaction by doing kinetics. 
And so this blue line represents what I just showed in the previous slide of the substrate and the enzyme together. And then this red line is just the substrate. So that's good because it shows that there's no reaction occurring with just the substrate, whereas if the substrate was increasing, like the blue line, then something would be off and we wouldn't trust our enzyme mimic as much. But um, So again, this is good. We obviously know it's working. But it still doesn't tell us quite enough about our enzyme mimic and how we can fix it. So from this, we go to calculating uh, kinetic parameters. So this is just an example graph. Um, we would run this multiple times, so we get multiple blue lines. And one line represents one dot on this linear uh, plot. So what are these values? Km is the affinity of the enzyme to the substrate, um, so how well those are attracted to each other. And then Kcat is the net rate of the reaction, so how quickly is our substrate being cleaved. And then Vmax is the maximum rate of reaction, so maximum number of substrates that this enzyme can turn over. So this is our actual plot. Um, so it obviously doesn't look as perfect. But um, we calculate our Km and Kcat from the equation of the line. And then we calculated Kcat and Km and compared it to chemotrypsin. And having a high Kcat is good. So our Kcat here is higher than chemotrypsin. And having a low Km is good. So our Km is still higher than chemotrypsin, which isn't as good. But these still show promising results, and we're able to move forward from knowing this information. So again, we were able to synthesize a surfactant-based enzyme mimic, um, and it showed promising results. But we still have a future work that we can do, so what we're going to try to do to make our Km lower and our Kcat higher is increasing this alkyl chain length and increasing the nucleophile strength. Um, which again is caused by the hydroxyl group cleaving the bond. And I'd like to thank the Craig Hawker group. I'd like to thank Erica, Maria, and Tyler, and the Eureka for funding my project, and Eva Letter for also funding my project.